Welcome to the oh man. Ooh, you haven't it's fucked that hot... up that much in a long time. Oh, I forgot. I should tell them you guys can cuss if you need to. <laughs> like I said, you haven't fucked that up that much in a long time. <laughs> yeah, but normally I warn the guests that they're allowed to do it. And I forgot to yeah. do it. Anyway, all right. We'll try this again. Is like intro a bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that yeah. this will play before the show now because I it's been a hot minute since I've messed up and I normally edit out my mistakes and I leave Ross's mistakes in. So it's on me. I'll probably leave that one in this time. So mm. here we go. Three. Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Evelyn. And I'm Ferenc. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Tonight, we're socially distanced as always. It's the only way we've ever done the show. I'm in the Midwest. Ross is in the Northeast. And Ferenc and Evelyn are in Costa Rica. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yes. Still, exactly. the beach, huh? Still doing the beach life. Uh, yeah, we actually left the beach a few days ago, oh. and now we are in the middle of the country, and it's equally beautiful. And I'm, uh, is it safe to assume it's raining right now? Uh, a little bit, <laughs> like in the afternoon, <laughs> the and after- yesterday also in the afternoon, uh, and the locals told us that uh, it's so basically the rainy season started earlier this year. <laughs> Yeah, Fantastic. it's supposed to be dry now, but we are quite unlucky <laughs> with that. But it's only been a few days, so we are, we are okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, Rain does people well. Uh, Ross I, is getting poured on right now. Yeah, he wanted to I, barbecue tonight, and he cannot because it's so rainy. I I made the clever decision to barbecue tonight and forgot to check the weather and or radar and barbecued in the rain. So, yeah. Rain is he good said- for he sent me a radar picture that's just all yellow. Yeah. It's like, it's, that's not normally good. I have nothing to complain about. I am deeply in tune with what's happening down in the middle of the country, like south-ish west of you, Chris. Oh, okay. And southeast of me. South, is it southeast of you? Uh, the tornadoes that were in Mississippi and Alabama? Yeah. That's southeast. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought there was part of it in Texas, but... That's south. Yeah, it's, dead uh, south. Yeah, we're we're fortunate to not have to deal with that, and we we wish the best for everybody that has had to deal with that. So, so. speaking of rain, you have a press car that's great in the rain. <clears throat> it is actually fantastic in the rain because <laughs> it has snow tires. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I have an M three forty i a BMW. Okay. Um, it's here until Thursday, I think. Um, and I've spent a lot of time with BMW press cars over the last, let's call it 18 months. Um, so the M340i is, the weird thing about it is that the 3 Series is now basically the size of what the 5 Series used to be. Yep. So it is, that's it. That's the car that is in my driveway it's next a beautiful to the car. <laughs> it is. It's very shiny. Very pretty it, the thing about the three series now is that it is as good looking as the m4 isn't good looking like <laughs> hold on so like, is this a four series or a three series now so technically the one here is a three series the four series is the two-door version um and ah, okay the new numbering is confusing me yeah. <laughs> now, you're used but... to the three five seven and that's it yeah. You want to get into the nuances of like the grand coupes and all that stuff. It's like the sedan awesome, awesome version awesome of the movies. coupe version of the sedan version. Literally, yeah, literally is okay. The, are, are the even numbers two doors or four doors? I like, yeah. No, we could we could wax poetic about that for a long time. I um, wish they'd have gone the route of Hyundai and made all the odd series have three doors. So that way it'd be easier to remember odd has three, like the Velocitor has three doors. But that's not how things work with car numbering anymore. And I know, no I car mean, numbering. Mercedes insane. and Cadillac are the worst offenders. And it, anyways. At least Lexus still represents the correct size of engine. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, okay. We can, but it doesn't because the LX600 is not a 
a six, six liter V8. Liter V8. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> but it has this is BMW six... supposed to be the four liter, but it's not a four liter. Oh god, I... <laughs> no, no. It, honestly, if the three series had a the four liter twin turbo V8, that would be amazing. Um, but it doesn't. So the <laughs> M340i has the straight six and it's turbocharged and is rated at. 382 horsepower and 368 torque and everybody knows that it, that is a fucking lie and it is much much more than that and you know you could send it to a tuning shop and do intake exhaust tune and basically have like 450 to the tire and stock it is unbelievably fast nice. like it's the kind of car that, like, I remember being a kid and thinking the M3 was the fastest thing in the world. And this is, you know, we're statistically faster. <laughs> 20 years on from then. Yeah. But this is so much faster than that. And it's just the M3. It's not the M4. It's not the M3. It's, you know, it's, it's an what you, M. 340i or yeah, whatever. It's what most people walk in the dealer and four thirty. Just you know, lease. So yeah. yeah, it's great. It uh the seats are a little tight, and I'm not a big person. They're a little for, tight for yeah, for me, and which like you, Chris, you and I are obviously not the same size at all. I categorize you as normal size, and I'm yep. not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the, the seats for me are for daily driver status borderline okay like they're they're just borderline but the, the very interesting thing is that the duna we have a nine month old and the base and the duna are it's yeah. like the biggest car seat you can possibly get because it's car seat and stroller in one it is as we've seat. established on the show yes, yeah yes it fits incredibly well in this car better okay. Honestly, it fits better than the Blackwing. Better either, than the Cadillac. Either Blackwing, yeah. Wow. So, anyways. Good interior um, space in a BMW. Who knew? Yes. Shocker. Yeah, for $67,000 for a 3 Series. New. Um, yeah, so that's it. Wow. In <laughs> I did not my... spend that much money on any of mine. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, no, it's it's thinking about like down payments on houses and i'm like wow seventy thousand dollars is a lot of money um yep. yeah other than that in my world um i haven't done the carplay install yet <laughs> it's only been a week since we recorded Man, so it's not appalling that you haven't installed it yet you're still waiting for the appropriate temperatures and as we established it's raining like crazy you can't work outside in those conditions i had Two plans for last Saturday. One of them was to install CarPlay. Didn't mm -hmm. happen. The other was to bring the Polaris, the ATV that they have so kindly loaned me home from my parents' facility in which it is currently stored. Um, and they decided to all get stomach bug that I had about three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> So you said you can keep it all. I'll yeah, see was, you guys later. Like I am going nowhere near you. Yeah. So yeah. Anyways, Chris has much, much, much more exciting things to talk about. Well, we're not quite there yet. And of course, a kid walked in the room behind me. So that's always normal. But Ooh, which um, kid? Uh, I can't see anybody. It's the one I refer to as 3.0 on the internet. So it's the it's the eight-year-old. But he's in here making a bunch of noise. Um so uh, I still, for the, for the audience listening, this is going to be like three shows in a row where we talk about leaving for the rally and prepping for this Overland rally out in Utah. So that is still happening. The 12 volt, 12 volt refrigerator, refrigerator uh, arrived recently. It's a fridge freezer. Um, I got it from Home Depot of all places. So like it's a, it's a brand I've never heard of before. It has been plugged in for multiple days in the house and has been functioning at the correct temperature. Um, so I, that was my kind of like baseline. I was like, can it at least maintain a temperature for multiple days plugged into a power source, power source? Yes. Um, it also fits perfectly behind the third row seat in the Sequoia now. Um, 
the uh, the Arctic 65 quart cooler that I was going to take. Uh, you had to move the third row seat a little forward uh, and they're powered. So like sometimes that gets finicky uh, and then you had to like slam the trunk lid for it to close um, this. It fits there. Uh, it's got a handle on the side that a bungee cord wraps around and there's a little tie down right there mm -hmm. and it all is right there and firm. Nice. Um, we did have how, a... Um, how big is this one internally? Oh man, I knew that was the question. The 65, <laughs> that sounds a, sounds a big fridge. Sounds like... A right, big... 60, well, it's a really big cooler is what I had. Um, mm -hmm. But for the refrigerator, I think oh, it's cooler. I think it's 48 cans. Okay. Like 48 soda cans. So like it's, and it's only me on this first rally uh, or on this rally. So like, it'll be... Um, yeah. so, so let's... It's 1.7 cubic feet. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are European and you work in metric systems. Yeah, exactly. Cool. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but I pretended I did. So to, so to back up quickly to set the stage for the two of you, obviously, and for the audience, um, Chris is going on the Rogue Overland Rally. Um, oh, yeah, I've we, heard about that before. Yeah, We have graciously been invited to be what is, I guess, the official podcast of this this uh, rallies. I don't know rally? that we use the word yeah, official, not official, but like we will be yeah. a podcast on the rally. I am going to record yes. while we're there. Um, Chris is a podcaster attending the rally. Yes. So and he's so, going to Utah and taking his my wife's definitely daily Definitely not driver. his wife's daily It's definitely my wife's <laughs> daily driver. It's, yeah, it it's, is. it's it a is. 2008 yeah. Sequoia Platinum. Um, it, it now has skid plates and sliders everywhere because um, I I never would have been hesitant about the rally, but they were like, we're going back to our roots of rock crawling. And I went, crap, and I, went, I am not yes. a rock guy. <laughs> like, and Ross, Ross has a Lexus GX that's got sliders and skid or only you don't have sliders, yeah. but he's got so hopefully they're on the way. We we didn't get to talk about what we talked about earlier today. Yeah, um, I didn't get to make that phone call either. So anyway, the Sequoia's you also armored. Have a GX. Yeah. Do you have a GX too? Well, it's the well, this is not it, but it's at home and it's the we have the Prado and it's the GX yeah. 470. Yeah. And you have the GX 460, right? We, I have we have a 460. Both. But but Ross it, owns but, a 60, yeah. But if you have a 470 Prado, you have the holy grail. Like <laughs> Yeah, we love it. We absolutely love it. We we took it to quite a few places but i guess we talk about it later yeah yes we'll get into oh, that later because i know where the pictures are too i found it <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get there we'll get there so the fridge arrived it's working well um we had a a, a weird test run today i had forgotten i'd put it in the back of my wife's truck and plugged it in and she drove off to work today which meant it powered on and then ran through the day in the back of her truck and didn't kill her battery which was nice to know um All right. Yeah, yeah, so that it survived that test, but um, I, I'm supposed to have a standalone power unit. It was supposed to arrive today, according to the shipping estimate. I'm very hoping it arrives tomorrow. I know it's like in the area, so if it doesn't, I'm gonna get, like go hunt down the shipping company and be like, just give me the thing, because yeah. um, I'm leaving work. very early Wednesday morning. So <laughs> by the time this podcast comes out, we are in, we're in the future. From yes, yeah, so. But, Hopefully it arrived and everything was amazing. I, it went great. I hope for your sake it all went perfectly. Yes, there was one other shipping item that we were worried about. Um, Factor fifty five, uh, in in, mm. not accordance, but in cooperation with Warren, uh, Andy Lilenthal, who's been a guest on the show before, sent me a Warren three quarter shackle, and then Factory fifty five sent me the Hitch Link two uh, which is basically a big piece of metal that slides into your hitch and then you still put your regular um, pin through and carter pin. And then there's just a giant hole on the outside and that's where the worn shackle goes. So the Sequoia has a very uh, reliable recovery point on the back, um, which leading into this rally, I wasn't super concerned about, but like they're still getting snow in Utah. So now I'm like uh, traction boards and recovery points are probably mm -hmm. going to be very necessary on this trip. So um, I'm very hopeful. I'm hoping to come back and report good things. Um, I'm taking extra tie rod ends just in case and fully expecting to use all of the recovery points at some point. Um, just because it's going to be, it's, I think it's going to be sloppy. Does Which area Sequoia? exactly in Utah? So we start just north of Moab. 
Um, we run, mm -hmm. I think, two trails in Moab in a couple of days, and then it's into parts of Canyon Lands and then towards Capitol Reef. Um, oh, nice. All of it's gorgeous, right? Like, I just, mm -hmm. I, uh, I was out there in the fall of 2020, just my dad and I during the pandemic. Um, and I can't wait to go back. I freaking love Southern Utah. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Be there soon. Um, yes, it just takes you four days or three days. Does <laughs> the Sequoia have the center locker or is it just open, yeah. open, open? No, it has center locker. Yep. Oh, center okay. diff lock, right. uh, four low works. Um, mm -hmm. Did we go over on the last show all the things we did to it? We did. Yes, and we did. All the four uh, by four uh, stuff just got a, a fluid refresh. Um, front yes. diff, rear diff, transfer case. Um, breaks are resurfaced mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited we should be good to go i just yeah, yeah, yeah. to be honest what i wish i had was a bigger fuel tank uh you have what a is it 5.7 yes it's the <laughs> 5.7 liter and it's got a 26 gallon tank that they were like uh be ready for like 250 miles and i was like five five gallon extra jerry can is gonna come in handy uh <laughs> 250 off road is going to be a stretch for the Sequoia, I think. So, yeah, you turned it off a lot. You'll be fine. <laughs> I'll be the fine. Worst, worst case scenario is somebody else on the trip has the fuel that you need. And I, I will be making friends with many podcast stickers <laughs> and, and money if I need to. <laughs> Speaking of, if the two of you have a permanent location, let me know and I'll send you podcast stickers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what, we, what we, we love stickers, but yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> or actually not unfortunately, we don't have a permanent place. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it's not unfortunate. It's perfect. <laughs> that is the opposite of unfortunate. That is the best. All right. You yeah. already segue, Ross. Keep going. Yeah, no. So <laughs> what we'd like to do to kick things off with our guests is to have you give us your what do you call it? elevator pitch elevator pitch is what we normally 30 refer to it. second two minute you know spiel on who you are what your place is in the off-road world or overlanding world or or world in general and uh you know and why okay. you love what you're doing right um so i guess i'll go yeah. um uh, yeah so we are ferenc and evelyn and or actually Evelyn and Ferenc and uh, we are we are originally from Hungary and we've been doing quite big trips in the last basically since we met but uh, our larger trips include we uh, drive to Africa through the Sahara Desert with our Prado 120 and then we drove all the way from Europe to Singapore through China and everything between in between and now what we are doing is we actually with another vehicle with a four by four van it's a not very well known brand in north america iveco it's an italian brand um we are driving from what well, it started in halifax canada all the way across Ooh. the country to alaska um and then we are trying to go down drive down to argentina ushuaia uh, so that's our current trip. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, we love off-roading. We love traveling. Uh, in general, I love cars and I love traveling. And overlanding is the combination of the two. So that's what I love in this. And luckily, Evelyn was on board since we met. So we <laughs> do this together. Yeah. Yeah, I got into overlanding thanks to Ferenc. So <laughs> since we met, he kept talking about it. And before that, I have never heard about the term overlanding. So for me, it was just like, you know, holidays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, <laughs> since we started dating, um, he promised me that once we're going to quit our jobs and we're going to travel for a whole year. And I was like, wow, <laughs> who is this guy? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah if someone showed up and was two like years now actually in total or more than two years now yeah yeah yeah, yeah because we quit our jobs uh, in the end of 2017 and we were traveling for a whole year in 2018 <clears throat> we did some backpacking as well so first we went to africa um in january and that trip was six weeks long but that mm. was overlanding that was the drive 
That was yeah. backpacking, that's what Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And after that, oh, we wow. did two months backpacking in Southeast Asia. Asia, one month in Bali and one month in Vietnam. And then we uh, went to Singapore from Budapest. And that was six week, uh, six months long uh, overlanding by car. Yeah. Good Lord. Yeah. So we, we've the, had the, someone on it. This We've had someone on the past who did the... longer than all our trips before. Like, the, sorry, sorry. I think no, no, there's a delay. But so yeah, this trip is already longer than our previous trips altogether. Really? That's crazy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Chris, what was your question? I no, I was like, we've had someone on who's got done the Mongol rally before, but I've never really heard about I've going all that, the yeah. way to Singapore. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done, done that it. before. <laughs> just just before we met with Evelyn, like uh, I've I've done that, and uh, yeah, it's a long story, but we broke down in in my friends in Tajikistan, and we had to sell the car. It wasn't the the cheap uh, car version. It was a a different Mongol rally where we had to buy a a proper like a pickup truck or a van or something that can be then donated to a charity in Mongolia, and then okay. they turn it into an ambulance. So there used to be two versions. And um, we didn't quite make it to Mongolia. We had to uh, <laughs> abandon the car. Or actually, we sold the car in Tajikistan and then we made it to Mongolia. Anyway, my dream was to actually get to Mongolia with a vehicle, with our own vehicle. And mm -hmm. and yeah, that's why we were like, okay, when we met, I kept talking about this. And then a few years later, we actually done it. And while we were planning it, we were like, why? Why? stop in mongolia let's carry on to singapore yeah we see the china part is complicated and expensive but that we organized that and it was it was quite an experience yeah so <laughs> what, what i'm i mean we could talk about the adventures and, and i'm and i'm sure we will over the next little while and we can certainly talk about the vehicles um that you've taken on your adventures but what i'm curious about from the get-go is when you met had you broached the subject of yes i'd like to explore the world and i am planning to go about trekking country to country you know from place to place and you know being what's essentially nomadic or or was this is this something you knew when you met each other or was this like a learning process as you went did you did you meet each other and go yes i want i i plan to see the world like that's that's something we like to explore with our our guests who do this yeah so before we met i only traveled in europe by plane so it was really easy travel for me and then we met just after our friends got back from the mongolian rally and i guess oh, wow. Yeah, the, the experience was quite recent for him. So that was the that's why that was the only subject he could talk about. And he told me like, oh, wow, I, yeah, I spent five weeks in a car and you cannot imagine the feeling when you are not driving on a tarmac. You know, you just only mm -hmm. follow uh, tracks in the grass and something like that he told me something like that and i was like wow sitting in a car for five weeks oh. <laughs> that's <sounds> awful <laughs> i cannot do that i yeah. you know i'm always yeah. busy i yeah. always have to do something like workout mm -hmm. and everything and i was like no it's, that's that's not for me but he just kept talking about it and but when when we actually met i i only owned a honda s2000 it wasn't it was obviously nothing to do with off-roading uh but uh, when we questions were... to follow about the s2k <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then uh and then when like kind of we were looking for a a daily driver that can be used a bit more and we were like okay so let's buy something that can actually go places not just you know any kind of daily driver and so that's why we ended up with the 120 series land cruiser it's it's called mm -hmm. a land cruiser in europe um the the gx 470 and um and yeah it turns out slow uh, that's that's the one and slowly slowly we kind of bought the gear and obviously of course my experience going to mongolia was was very overwhelming very eye-opening that this can be done you can take your own car and travel to another continent and 
cross borders and camp anywhere you want and all the kind of stuff is just like it was mind blowing and and by the way i can talk about this for an hour like the the, the definition of overlanding and it, it how it's, it's a big subject online obviously Good. but it oh, should man. include the like the point of crossing international borders if you don't cross international borders it's not overlanding it's <laughs> yeah. that's okay. it. I'm car and I'm end of argument, <laughs> end of argument. <laughs> glorified car camping camping is kind of the mantra the subtle unknown mantra of what most of the hobby has become so yeah, yeah. It yeah, doesn't. It, it doesn't actually matter. I'm. I'm kidding. But yeah, uh, <laughs> I. I'm with you. Like to me, when I first discovered all of this, international travel was a big part of it. A lot of it's yeah. available in the U.S. because we're such a big country in general. I think since we because we traveled through the U.S., obviously the 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 reason why I think it's shooting like the, if if there is a definition, the definition should include international border crossings, is because just traveling through the U.S. is too easy. <laughs> like yeah exactly you can, you can make it more difficult with off-road trails yeah. of course and some rock crawling or whatever but that's that's off-road that's something else there is no problem solving as such as like border crossings like you have to understand the other person you have to yeah. figure out where yeah. to get your next stamp how to import your vehicle to the country and where is your next police checkpoint if you need to be afraid of that at all mm -hmm. and just where to buy fuel what kind of fuel all that kind of stuff anyway and then if you if you need to find a mechanic how to find and how to explain the problem in spanish or in tajik or whatever exactly uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh and yeah so just to go back to your original question so so it was very much an eye opening experience for me to to travel all the way to to tajikistan and we made it to mongolia eventually with with another vehicle but when we met we were kind of like okay let's let's buy a car that can or a truck that can take us around the world if we wanted to so uh the stock was i think good enough already but we started to buy a little like we bought the fridge we bought a rooftop tent it's just the usual stuff that people do and then oh the snowball we... effect is amazing isn't it <laughs> <laughs> and then the fact that we wanted to go to to the sahara desert we thought like okay let's just do a bit more to this truck and i took it to a professional off-roading uh workshop in in or garage in austria mm -hmm. and they made all the necessary changes that i, that I asked for like obviously a lift a proper roof rack a snorkel all the usual gear uh, uh in bash plates and all that kind of stuff and mm -hmm. it was pretty good uh, through all the really difficult trails through the Atlas Mountains in Morocco or the Sahara Desert in Mauritania or all kinds of stuff and of course then our on our trip from Europe to Singapore we ended up in some sketchy places and I mean in terms of trails and stuff and uh, it performed really really well but we kind of went through this classic route of needing more comfort and permanent table inside and be able to camp anywhere we want in bad weather in good weather all that kind yep. of stuff and that's mm -hmm. why we ended up with a van but it had to be four by four and there is a i think there are better choices in europe with four by four vans than in north america mm -hmm. Yeah, North America, we're, we're super limited to sprinters and Ford Transit vans that are all-wheel drive. We're super limited yeah. to the things that Europe has already had and that we are just getting here over the last few years. Right. So yeah. I did... I think the Sprinter is a good platform, but it's a it's a unibody construction. I think that makes it a lot, we lot mm -hmm. weaker than, for yeah. example, being Chris, Chris has some opinions on this. I no not not hard opinions. Just I spent a week oh, in a transit yeah. all wheel drive. Um, well, my my only sprinter anecdote I always used came from Dan Edmonds Ross, which his brother's diesel sprinter broke down in Western Colorado, yep. yep, in a legit city in Grand Junction, and it had to either get towed to Salt Lake City or back to Denver to get worked on because nobody around wait. will work on it. Or wait for weeks for parts. Yeah, I, I want to say he only waited three days, but was quoted three weeks. Yeah. Oh, wow. But he went to the dealer every day and was that guy who was irritating. So they made sure they got his vehicle out. And <laughs> the things that you take for granted if you own a Toyota 4x4. Oh, yeah. 
like that's a big game changer for us in a in the wrong way because we're traveling with an Italian van that's 25 years old is a lot different than a an, at that point newish Toyota. It just we weren't expecting any problems, and then even if you end up having problems, there is just anybody around the corner who can fix it, and mm-hmm. it's just and whereas so, with this one, there's a lot of work going on. I I have a random question. Does because you said you're from Hungary. Yeah. So does speaking Hungarian help in certain parts of the world? Because isn't hung- Hungarian one of the hardest languages? Like, does it not have any? And it's, and it's unique. It doesn't have any connection with any. Okay, that's why it's hard. Whatsoever. And it's uh, so it's pretty much useless to learn another language because everything is mm. from scratch. Like, uh, so it's not connected to. A lot of people think it's a Slavic language. It isn't. It's like okay. it's, it's supposed to be like mm. Finnish. Because it used to be at some point used to be the same language, thousands of years ago, whatever. But, uh, <laughs> but it may sound the same, but we wouldn't understand anything whatsoever in Finnish. And some people think it's close to Turkish. It isn't. Uh, some words are the same, but uh, but that's historical reasons. So, to answer your question, no. no. So we have to. <laughs> yeah. No. So you're you're just as helpless as we are when we travel sometimes. Well, well, yeah. I mean, the only language I speak properly is, is English. I'm picking up uh, Spanish now. We have to, and Evelyn speaks. Evelyn picks up Spanish when you have to. You do well. We have to, yeah. But uh, <laughs> and speaks a, a little bit, um, a little Italian. So for him, it's easier to pick up some Spanish. Yeah. Well, nice. I'm yeah, they way. they say immersion's the best teacher. Just mm, learn yeah. a lot. Just be around it. That's also true for mechanical problems. <laughs> yes. Well, the best way to learn how to do things is to just do them. <laughs> whether whether it ends well or not, <laughs> you know. But so how many countries have you been to thus far? For me, this is the 60th, 60th country. So 60th? Uh, course, yeah. Like oh, sorry, six zero, uh, yeah, well, yeah, 61. Six zero, yeah, yeah, maybe and sixty one. For me, about eighty eighty five. I don't know. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> yeah, but I think we visited like fifty countries together. Yeah, so like fifty far. countries together. Wow, yeah. wow. Can you? Yeah, there's a lot of small countries in Europe. It's much easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does yeah, Luxembourg sure. count? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're looking at things from a slightly uh, opposite side of the love perspective on this can you uh can you give us like three or four of your absolute highlights your favorite places you've ever seen on uh on that side on sorry on on europe or asia side or or just anywhere where yeah let's do Ooh, okay this is gonna be fun let's do two (laughs) let's do two on the europe asia side and two on the side in the relative space that you are right now because you're very far from from where yeah, that part like originated in europe definitely slovenia and uh, italy in okay. asia for me um mongolia and china yeah those were the highlights and um in america i would say uh, yukon and alaska yeah, if I have to pick Alaska territories. Yeah, so Yukon and Alaska. Yeah. Although okay. we really like Costa Rica. Oh no, did their internet for just me, freeze? Okay, it's back. Me, I thought a it was little bit easier to choose a little I bit. I thought my were on Fritz. No. You're good. You're good. We're still here? Okay. Yeah. 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 So for me, it's a little bit easier to choose because I'm a huge fan of Mongolia. Like, like I don't think there is a better country to do overlanding uh, because it, the country is empty and there's no roads in many, many places, just tracks and trails and stuff. Uh, so Mongolia is absolute number one for mm-hmm. me in the whole world. And uh, second, yeah, Italy is also very good. Like Italy is my second favorite country, but for different reasons. And uh, on this side of the of the Atlantic, 
I, I'm like I've never been to Costa Rica before, but it's just such a good place. I've never I didn't expect it to be that good. It is really really good, and uh, and otherwise uh, Utah just blew my mind. Really? Yeah, yeah. It, Utah, it's another yeah. world. Yukon, Yukon. I didn't want to say the Yukon. I didn't want to mention it even like at the same level as as Utah because Evelyn already mentioned it, but. But Utah, we had a, a, a really, really good time. We spent several weeks there and all the places that you just mentioned before, we, we went to all those places and just that will remain on this trip one of the highlights, I'm pretty mm. sure. That's so interesting. We, I, think, I think I went past it. I'm in Baja. Yeah, we tend here, I mean, certainly in our, our podcast and, um, and in our, you know, off-roading culture in america we idolize utah so it is very interesting to hear from the outside perspective that it holds the same regard yeah yeah it's it's totally unique um the the landscape the the trails and and how in some parts how empty it is that's also from a european point of view it's it's so nice because Europe is just overcrowded and everything mm. is restricted. Uh, you cannot really do the certain places where you can go off roading, but mm. not many. And um, yeah, what's the I most remote... Canyon Lens was the high. Ca- Canyon Lens was yeah. our favorite. Yeah, yeah. Canyon yeah. Lens First, is... we went to Moab. We discovered the area around Moab, and then Archie's National Park. We did a hike there. And after that, we went mm. to Canyonlands and we were like, oh, wow, <laughs> it's getting even better. Yeah. <laughs> Chris is like, I'll, I'll oh, yeah, be there. The point of gulch. Chris is like, yeah, you know, I'll be there. And, I, uh, I can't wait to go back. It's days. seriously some of the most beautiful that places was, in the uh, U.S. It was like a, a 12 mile hike. That's a good hike. Yeah, day one hike. and then 12 miles back. And then obviously next day, mm. it's pretty good. And then we 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 took our tents and food and water and everything and uh, and just camped in like yeah. for us this was the wilderness just mm-hmm. camping in there. Yeah. What's the most remote you've been? Whether it's you know camping out of a vehicle or parking somewhere and hiking. Uh, I guess it must be the Yukon mm-hmm. somewhere yeah. in the Yukon. Like we went to the on the Dempster Highway. There's some pretty remote mm. places on that road. Uh, and obviously we went off off the Dempster Highway to camp and found some places. That's just such a... Yeah, that's up there. Absolutely fantastic place yeah. in the world. Yeah, but Chris and I... Uh, yeah. We, we've been talking about Dempster and... Uh, and what's... Chris, what's the other one? The... Mackenzie Trail? No, uh, not Mackenzie. Jesus. It, it'll come to me the second we end the show, obviously, but <laughs> uh, per normal. Yeah. It's a uh, it's pretty country up there. And you know. Yeah. People it's... tend to forget about the remoteness of oh. high North America. You know, the way that people think about like you know mongolia in terms of remoteness how often are you guys just by yourselves the two of you or how often do you guys like travel with a, a another group per se it, it like varies yeah it's most of the time we travel totally alone and then every now and then our travel <laughs> plans or or our um schedules just match with other people and mm-hmm. obviously when you meet like-minded people then then it's easier to travel together but on on like towards asia we were almost always alone because it's just that it's hard to meet other overlanders because the the, the place is too big but mm-hmm. here on the pan american everybody seems to be doing the similar routes so it's much easier to meet people and that's a lot of fun we love yeah, here we camp with Richard and Ashley. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there's just so many people from Europe are doing this trip now because obviously for two years, nobody could travel. Uh, all those people are here now. And then 
that there are a bunch of people who plan to travel to Asia. That's of course is not possible right now. So um, all those people are here as well. So it's just twice as many people doing it um, than than before, I think. And uh, and and of course, on this part of the world where we are right now in Central America, it's just obviously not that many roads to disappear from other people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're going to end up meeting people there. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Like yesterday it was crazy. We met like 10 European vans and uh, yeah. we are next to three vans from Brazil. Are we okay? Yeah. No, so. you're back. There you yeah. go. Okay. I'm just going to make okay. another note because I got to cut that glitch too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We met a lot of other overlanders in the Yukon. And then, yeah, we got connected again in Alaska. And yeah, in the US, we, we met, yeah, in some, yeah, some travelers in California and also obviously in the Tetons and um, yeah, in other national parks as well. And also in Mexico, in Baja. Yeah, yeah Baja was, was full. Too. Or actually, Baja we was full. Travelers. I think we were before the, 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 the main season, but still there were quite a few. Where? Yeah. Where in the lower forty-eight did you visit? Uh, we entered in in Washington, and then mm -hmm. we we kind of uh, we didn't want to do the Pacific Coast because that's a quite easy drive in the future yeah. when we want a vacation <laughs> at some point. Uh -huh. So we didn't want to do that. So that's why we we've done kind of the Midwest, uh, um, or not not quite the Midwest, but like the is it the <laughs> Continental Divide Trail? I think around the Continental yes. okay. Divide. Yeah, like we wanted yeah. to do that, and um, and and that's why we headed inland towards Montana, and then the yellow in the Yellowstone National Park, and then the Tetons, mm -hmm. and then headed oh, south to Yellowstone. Oh, man. yeah, it was crowded. It was that was the, <laughs> the one that was so very jealous. crowded. And then uh, yeah, it was it was fantastic. And then the the Tetons was was pretty nice, and and then of course Utah, and that's where we spend most of the time of our time within the US. And then uh, what I didn't have any expectations of, because I didn't know what to expect, was uh, Joshua Tree. Yeah. It was, we, we ended up on a pretty nice trail. I can't remember the name of the trail, but it was a dry riverbed. And um, it was with the family that you just showed before with the uh, white Sprinter van. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that was that was pretty cool. That's awesome. And tough, actually. Yeah, that's tough. That's so good. It looks like that might have been around that area. Uh, this is Baja, actually. Baja, gosh. Oh, yeah. Regionally close. Regionally, yeah. It's yeah. kind of close. Yeah. It's not far, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dry riverbed. Let me see. Actually, one of the I think one of the pinned reels on uh, at the top, at the top is is from there. One of the pinned ones. Oh yeah, them. yeah. Here we go. It's labeled as soon as I clicked it. It's at Joshua Tree. Nice. Some solid spotting work too. Oh yeah. Spotters matter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Year, years ago, I did a jeep trip and uh, I climbed a. a small section of rocks where people with much bigger tires and lifts were like, just can't do it. It's like, are you paying attention to the guy at the top that's telling you where to put your tires? Cause that, that's how I got up. <laughs> like I just listened to him. It was totally right. fine. Dude, that's great. Lots of, lots of comments about that. But yeah. Dude, the fan's good. It looks great. It does. I got faith in an Italian band. It'll be all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, there was a period when we had more problems than than what I like, because I think as much as I like learning about these and, and the reason why we actually bought an old mechanical truck so that I can try to figure out and fix it if I, if, I, if it needs to be. Uh, I don't like modern trucks or vans or cars because it's just, you don't know <laughs> where to start. And I don't know, I just like the old ones. Uh, and And we ended up, so there was... 
there was an overdue maintenance work because of the the timing chain in the in the engine that had to be replaced it should have been replaced before i didn't know that i'm i'm original lawyer so i'm figuring these out <laughs> on the and it's like cuz i i know like some people could would think like oh how come you didn't know that or how come you didn't replace that before this big trip and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff because mm -hmm. i didn't know i had to so like uh, even though i'm i was always interested in cars i never fixed cars so it's a different thing and um yeah and yeah once that was replaced that was only in oaxaca in mexico so kind of recently uh since then it's it's a lot better and uh but to be honest before that we didn't have many problems but as soon as i found out i have to worry about this we started to have problems yeah <laughs> Funny up until works, i didn't right? know that this was an issue it wasn't an issue as soon as i found yeah. out it's an issue then it's like problems started to happen well that's great i'm glad you got to take care of <laughs> um we've reached the time at the end of the show um i'd say uh i'll just kind of go through it real fast um you guys are about halfway through the americas now yes yeah, something like that yeah yeah we're gonna something ship like from panama to colombia and that's the next leg yeah nice cool. Yeah. Um, so people can follow along. Uh, the website is at overlandsite.com. Right? I said at yeah, at the beginning of a web address, which yeah, is really weird. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because all your social media is at Overland Site. Oh, and right. I just went ahead and combined the two because, you know, t saving time. Just, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> so you can follow Frenick and Evelyn at Overland Site or overlandsite.com. We'll go ahead and leave that awkward part in. Tonight's the show where I mess up a lot. I apologize. Mm -hmm. I love, um, it. love it. For those who normally listen to the show, you can rate and review us on uh, Apple Podcasts, uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm still making the push for Spotify, mainly because I can see who follows us on Spotify now. Yes. So if you haven't followed us on Spotify, click that follow button. It helps us. Uh, you can uh, read what we write on the Hooniverse, uh, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. Ross is no, not like the one from Friends, and I'm at Overlean Dad. And we did a show. Thank you so much, guys, for yes. joining us. Thank you for joining. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Let us know when you at your next landmark, and uh, let's do another one. We'd be keen. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. <laughs>